Hello everybody, welcome back. Let's follow together. I was, uh, the other day the Holy Spirit just told me, don't play with fire. Is it is the fire of temptation. He was saying, don't play around with it. You'll get burned. My verse comes from Psalms 141, verse 4. Do not let my heart to be drawn to what is evil, so that I take part in wicked deeds. Along with those who are evildoers, do not let me eat their delicacies. Do not let me eat their delicacies. See, that's a that's a lie of sin, of, of temptation. It looks good on the surface, but once you eat, of the delicacies, you find out that it is not life, but actually death. It might look like life on the surface, but it's actually death. And that's uh, what Satan has done from the beginning, even in the garden. He made it seem like they were lacking. It made it seem like God's plan wasn't good, but God has a good plan. And it's His good and perfect will. And it might not always make sense in the moment, but we can look at Jesus, the price He paid on the cross, that while we were yet sinners, he died for us. It's that first love that lets us let go and trust him even in the plan and even sometimes in the pain. Remember uh, a couple months after I, I got clean and gave my life to Jesus. Um, really, I gave my life to Jesus and he got me clean. And it continues to keep me clean. and It continues to reveal things in my own life that, that he's working on. And, and our, our job is to just say okay. So I pray that you say okay to him today. Anyway, I was at work and uh, anyone that really knows me and knew me before, Jesus got a hold of my life and his kindness and mercy just showed up in such a powerful way that transformed me to where I'm actually trying to just reach people with the good news and, and tell them that there is a Savior, there is a Lord, and he is risen and he loves you. Amen. But, uh, I chewed tobacco like a fiend, like, oh man, I would I would go to sleep with one in. I'd wake up. First thing I would do when I would wake up, I'd put one in. Um, I had hopes that someday I could quit using drugs, but like I had pretty much resigned to the fact that I was going to be chewing tobacco forever. And one night I'm at work having just fellowship with God and just, I was, I was grateful. Gratitude will take you far in the kingdom. Keep looking to Jesus, and you'll have reasons to be grateful, even in the storm. Even when the weight and the fires of temptation are there and calling, beckon, He always gives you a way out. Anyway, there, there at the night at the machine, I was chewing, and I'm not even supposed to be chewing in this factory, but I was that, I was that hooked to it, I was that addicted to it, and I, I was powerless over it. And uh, we need the power, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. He can break off every chain and addiction and hurt and habit in your life by the power of God living on the inside. So I'm there at my machine just being grateful, talking to the Lord, and I hear in my heart, let me take that from you. Now I knew what he was talking about. He was talking about the chew in my lip. And I'm like, ah, well, my, my buddy, my mentor who I looked up to, who I still look up to as a great man of God, he had three years clean before he quit smoking. Excuses. I had excuses. I had a lot of them. And he's like, yeah, I want to take this from me. That's what I kept hearing. I want to take this from me. I want to take this from me. Whatever you're dealing with today, he wants to take it from me. And it, it, it might not go in the moment, but it might just be calling you to trust. He might be showing you things, showing you things through what you're going to help reveal and and. Reveal secret motives of your heart that you didn't even know were there, but he wants to clean and purify and make you his home, make you into a new house, a new creation, where the old things do pass away. But anyway, so I'm there, you know, I, I throw that excuse, uh, I throw this one, uh, I throw, I, at the time I had like barely any money, and I'm like, well, God, I, I just spent like almost 30 bucks on this container. I want to take this from you. And I'm like, well, God, I've only had like three months clean. Because I've heard the horror stories, right? Of, man, don't try to do too much at one time. Like, you can't do that, right? You can't quit drugs and, and quit tobacco. You'll just fail. Well, the God I serve never fails. And that's where my strength comes from. It's not because I'm, 
have some mighty willpower on my own. Now, I, honestly, I feel like I'm the weakest sometimes, but Christ gives me strength to do all things, to, to even do this, to even preach to you today the good news of our Savior who is risen. He loves you. And finally, I ran out of excuses. I want to take this from you. And you know what I said? I said, okay, but if you're going to take this, you have to take this, because I can't. And beloved, he will carry you through the storms. He he knows what is too strong and powerful for you. And let me tell you, the devil, he's been around for a while. And he's been doing this for a while. And he's stronger than you. But he's not stronger than he who is in you. Because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. If Christ Jesus lives in you, he will give you the power. He will give you the power to flee temptation and pursue righteousness, to, to pursue that new way of life. And it's really just saying yes to the Holy Spirit, putting the flesh to death and living by the Spirit. So I said, okay. And I, I went to the break room, and a little bit later, I, after I had I'd taken out and threw in the trash can, I was probably pretty dramatic, but I was excited. Went into the break room, and I had a container to chew. And my friend sat down, we were pretty close buddies, and I said, here, man. God's taking this from me. <laughs> Do you want this? If not, the trash can's hungry. You know what he said? Because he was he was my friend. He knew the addiction that I had of putting stuff in my lip. And he said, okay, but when you want this back, I'll have it. And I just told him, the Lord took this from me. Uh, it's been a couple years now. Now, I'm not saying temptation isn't there. Every once in a while, I'll smell something, I'll, you know. The temptation is there, but the difference is when Christ is in you, you have the power to actually say no, to, to walk away, to live different. Now, I'm not saying that testimony so your story looks exactly the same. Don't use it like that, but use it like this, that God is faithful. He is just. Let me read you something from Psalms 91. If I can find it. Help me, Lord. Hallelujah. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. Right here, I love this part. He will cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you will find refuge. This right here. His faithfulness will be your shield and your rampart. His faithfulness. Our faith is in the faithfulness of Jesus Christ, that he is with you through the storms, through the trials, through the temptation. And he's saying, flee from the fire. It might look crazy. It might not make sense to anybody else. I remember I was in a, a convention, and it was a recovery convention. It was pretty cool. It was the first one I ever went to. It kind of left me with a bad taste in my mouth. Some of the speakers, the things they were saying, that's neither here nor there. But we got to this uh it was a comedy show, and there's a big complex, and it was just, he was up there speaking, and man, things he was saying, like, I didn't agree with. It was just not sitting well in here. You know what I'm talking about? And I had a choice. Everybody was around there. I was looking at people that I looked up to that had multiple years clean, and they were sitting there, and they were laughing. It didn't bother them. But I had a check of my spirit. It was my conviction saying, this ain't cool. This ain't cool. Now, maybe I was a little too judgmental in, in that moment. I don't know. But you know what? I got out of there. And I knew there were some looks. I don't, I don't know. They were like, what's this dude doing? But I had to get out of there. There's no shame in fleeing. Sometimes being the stronger man is the man that knows. I'm in over my head here. If I stick around, I'm probably going to get singed by the fires of temptation. My life means more to me than this. I'm out of here. Sometimes you just got to do that with, with Facebook, man. If you're getting, if you're scrolling and scrolling and things are pulling at you and pulling at you, sometimes you just got to put it down. Jesus said to put out your own eye if it causes you to be tempted. Like, I'm, I'm not saying that. And I don't believe he was saying that. He wants to, like, us to mutilate our flesh. If, if that's what you're, you're going after, I believe you are deceived because God is a God of love. He does not, anyone, does not want anyone to perish, but all to come to repentance. So. But, but I believe it's, it's what you're looking at, man. 
I know it's about the inside, but if what you're doing on the outside is causing you to sin on the inside, then they gotta go. Now, I, I know there's just situations that we can't just get out of. Like, you're not a monk. You're not living in the hills somewhere, right? You're not alone because we're, we're called to shine. We're called to be in the world, not of it, right? But if what you're looking at, if what you're participating in is causing you to get closer and closer to the fire, don't play around with it. Run from it. Your life means more than that. And people might look at you strange. They, they might look at you like they looked at me that day. It doesn't matter. You know what matters? Who's really looking at you. And that is God Almighty. And you know what? He is for you. So who can be against you? And you know what? He is stronger than all the temptation. Don't believe the lie that it's never going to get better. God can do abundantly above and beyond all we can ask or imagine. He has the power to save that's Christ alone. That's our risen Lord and Savior, Yeshua, Jesus, the Christ, the anointed one. He is our Savior. Put your hope in him. Let his faithfulness be your shield. He will always give you a way out of temptation. Sometimes you just got to listen. Sometimes you just got to get off the couch. Be blessed.